What's going on everyone? Dan Julian here, nurse practitioner for Dan Aesthetics Medical. And I'm happy to do another Instagram Live with the one and only Lee Walker. We are going to be discussing some hot topics today. So the first one's going to be covering basically, do HA fillers cause cancer? Because there's a lot of people asking me that question. A lot of clients ask me that. And there's also been some discussion going around about a study that's in the works. So we're gonna bring him on and let's get this thing going. Hey YouTube, before we jump into the video, make sure you check out my Patreon account. It's designed for serious medical aesthetics providers just like you. There it is. How are things, man? Uh, everything's good. No complaints. It's um, it's a great time to be in medical aesthetics with uh, all of the interesting subjects that we're going to be discussing, which I think is, it's an interesting point to discuss how, how far we can take this is, is, I really don't know, but... I'm open to your questions, Dan, and it's a pleasure to be on here again with you. Um, I always get a, a really good sense of happiness when I speak with you. You're, you're forever sort of super happy. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate that. You know, it's funny because a lot of people ask me, like, so uh, what do you associate Dan with Dan Aesthetics for? And a lot of people are like, he's like super nice guy. I'm like, I hope I think that's a good thing, but at the same time, I'm hoping to to come across more as a leading expert in medical aesthetics. But I'll take the happiness and I'll I'll just take it as I go. And and honestly, this is the reason why I do these medical aesthetics uh, Instagram live videos is to really keep the educational piece component going. I'm learning as I go. By the way, I'll do a quick introduction for you, okay? So for those of you who are not aware of who Dr. Lee Walker is, it's the founder of Lee Walker Academy. That's been going on since 2017. I think you've been practicing in medical aesthetics for a good 10 years probably before that. You're also dentist and I think ENT prior to that. And you've been in the field now for a long time. And you're a member of ACE, which is the Aesthetics Complications Group. You're a leading expert in this field. And right now you're doing this great tour Tour. It seems like you're doing that with Dr. Benji Dillon, and this is the Master Injector Series. All right, so let's talk about the big question right now, which is in medical aesthetics, there's this little discussion about HA fillers and cancer. And as soon as that happened, people are just paranoid and a lot of clients coming in saying, I don't know if I want that. What do you think about it? And I have to sit down and explain it to them. So I thought it would be a really good idea for two people who are in the industry to kind of just have an open, honest opinion and conversation about what that study said and what our interpretations are about that. So go ahead, man. What do you think about the study? Well, the study's not been released to my to my knowledge. It was a presentation at, at BAPS, which is the British Association of Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons, and the information was uh, released in their conference. So we really don't know the context in which it's been delivered and what the ongoing research is or what it means or what type of study it is, which is which is pretty interesting because what that does is then it leads to sensationalism and newspapers, magazines and everybody else sort of love anything which is sensationalized. It makes things interesting. It gives talking points, areas of debate. It gives the naysayers, oh, I told you fillers were really bad. I think until we have the information, until we can critically appraise the literature associated with it, it's always going to be conjecture. It's always going to be one of the things that you think, oh, Yes, it does. You'll always have people say, yes, it does. And then, no, it doesn't. We've had this for God knows how many years with coffee, with red wine, with red meat, uh, with air fresheners, with everything. Everything is carcinogenic. Everything is going to cause a problem. We have to wrap ourselves up in a bubble. So this information, Dan, is I think it's a little bit sort of strange to release such a statement based around this because when I've read through some of the sound bites, it's basically plastic surgeons saying that fillers are more residual than we think. Yes, we know that we have that information that fillers hang around for a longer time. Yes, there is lymphatic compromise in some areas which normally is, is resolved. Uh, the question is, you know, does fat transfer in the eye, does that cause a lymphatic compromise because what it reads to me is that if you block the lymphatics the lymph can't drain and then you get an accumulation of I'll keep it for the lay person bad things within the lymphatic system and that will cause a possible or suggested route to a carcinoma again the words the semantics in the reading are very nebulous they're very vague it's suggested I could suggest I'm going to be a billionaire in two years I can suggest it but is it going to happen I don't think so so we're going to have to take this with not just a pinch of salt but a big Siberian salt mine until we have real world evidence and high quality because Dan if you think about it if there 
there is a link between cancer and fillers, I'm sure the FDA would be the first establishment to bring fillers down and shut them down straight away. So we don't have that. The other thing is, is that how many confounding factors would be responsible for a, a carcinoma? So again, it's one of those things where we're going to have to think, right, why is this person put this forward? Is there such research now that is leading it? And I would doubt it because I think the chairman said, there's no need to get your fillers dissolved. Don't panic. Everything is going to be okay. Now, if it was so serious, they'd say, get rid of, get rid of the stuff, get rid of it now straight away. And then you'll find things like how your holidays will cause problems and there'll be a never-ending scaremongering and I think some surgeons don't like people injecting fillers because again when you read through the article what happens is you read between the lines that they don't really know what's happening they don't really understand and you start seeing statements saying oh we don't like this type of overfilled face and patients are getting younger and it's driven towards surgeons not really liking fillers saying that they make surgery a little bit more difficult like the tissues fibrosed and all of those things so it may be anti-fillers dan i don't know but you know the question is does every case of lymphatic compromise or edema have the capacity to cause a cancer i would say no so for me it's a soundbite thrown out by by the plastic surgeons unfounded without any quality information it's scaring a lot of people and i don't think that is a good place to be i think it's open to debate i'd love to see the initial findings of the research to know whether or not these claims can be substantiated. I completely agree. I think that the first thing I, I went into is see, I'm like, who is doing this study? And is there any benefit to them doing this study, right? Because most of the time, whenever I've seen anyone do a post about this, you know, fear mongering about the HA field, it's usually someone who's going to benefit from it, right? So I know that there's a provider in the States who's posted it recently, and they're really pushing for something that's not filler. It's like their own brand of something else that's not related. And it's like kind of, you know, I see that as a big plug for them to say, push their skincare and push their other product that they're using to fill instead of filler. So it's like, okay, now who's the person who's doing the study? And it's Dr. Sparrow Theodoro, who's the founder of Body Sculpt, which is in mode. And he's a plastic surgeon, I guess. So, you know, it doesn't sound like this person, I don't know if they do fillers, but I know that they're definitely heavy into uh, microneedling radio frequency and whatever the devices that they have and this is where you know they're, they're going to make probably more of their profit so that's something that i'm not saying that's a definitive reason why but at the same it's something that triggers my mind of saying like okay i don't see anyone who's actually using dermal fillers usually make these statements usually it's someone who's not or making you know maybe a potential interest they're going their way if they're pushing against it now the other thing too is this is what i've read from the article they've basically injected dye into the faces of 50 i think women i'm not sure if it's women or men i think it's just women who've had filler pooling under the eye so they've already had a compromise basically it's not doing it to absolutely everyone they're just doing it for people who've had pooling of filler or pooling of some type of lymphatics obstructions after dermal fillers and they've injected this dye and they found that after a week or so that the dye hasn't drained it should drain right away so the theory or the thought process of that is that if the lymphatic channels are blocked it can potentially block the lymph nodes from detecting cancer right because that's basically the idea and by the way for those of you who are not aware of how that kind of works you have your lymph nodes here your provider will look for them and if they're inflamed it's maybe because you have an infection or maybe some type of cancer lingering because you have channels that radiate. They branch off to the mouth, the nose, the eyes, they branch off everywhere. You have them in the axilla, the neck, and those are supposed to draw back any foreign body substances or dust, bacteria, viruses, particles, anything that's dangerous will go to the lymph node. And if it's fine, it's just going to drain to the spleen. And that's how it works. But if it's something problematic, then the lymph node will inflame and basically go take care of it. Or it's an indicator of something wrong around there. So this is like the whole theory of saying that if that is blocking the pathway, then potentially can block the signal and let us know the early stages of maybe cancer. That's that's one theory. The other one is filler triggers an autoimmune response because it's a foreign body object. And he compares it to the breast implants, stating that breast implants have been shown to trigger similar responses in small studies that can lead to cancer. So that's another very broad picture here of just saying that, hey, by the way, in breast augmentation, breast implants, there's a small group here who have like a similar response. Well, remember the size of the implant, like fillers are a type of implants, right? But at the same time, it's very minute compared to the size of 
of, let's say, a breast implant or a butt implant, even a chin implant, right? So if you're looking at the size, definitely you're going to trigger more of an autoimmune response and the risks of having these responses are much more exaggerated based on the size of the implant. So these implants are huge. The little implants that we're using are tiny. So that's another kind of something you need to think about. And then basically he said that lymph nodes removed in these studies or if he's done any surgical removals of these lymph nodes, a foreign body reaction to filler was potentially detected. So my gosh, the, there's so many ifs here that there's no direct correlation, first of all. And this is where I think if you don't have a medical background where it can get really confusing because all you hear is just cancer. And as soon as you hear that, you're kind of, I'm not taking any chances. But really, it's exactly like you said, when it came to like wine, when it came to like meat, when it comes to anything that you take in that's not type of synthetic, like we're, we're ingesting these things regularly. Even like the, the toxins that are just breathing in the air, you're exposed to these regularly. And this study has really put fear in a lot of people for no reason. I get what they're trying to do with the study, but it really is not an indication to state that HA fillers are going to cause cancer. There's too many ifs here and really the comparisons are not even close. The other thing too now that I want to kind of like just justify and explain for a lot of people is that let's say if this pathway was blocked, okay, it's not like there's only one way to figure out if this root is going to cause cancer. It's not like that. You have lymphatic channels all over the place. This is the reason why you don't only have one lymph node. We have multiple lymph nodes and there's multiple ways to tell signals if there's going to be an obstruction. Even if there was an obstruction, okay, then there's other pathways that are going to be signaled and triggered. So your body doesn't work that way. Your body's much smarter. The other thing too about this study, which is really interesting, is that he's showing this on people who have lymphatic obstructions, maybe because of the filler, but maybe they've already had it. There's a lot of people who have pooling right here and they have compromised lymphatics for just genetics or who knows what reasons why. And this is the reason why whenever we actually see our clients, the first thing we ask, like, do you have a history of seasonal allergies? Do you have a history of waking up in the morning, feeling puffy in the morning if you've had sodium or wine the night before? Because if so, we're not doing any tear trough fillers or even maybe mid cheek fillers. It really depends on the client and it's the responsibility of the provider to be aware of these things. And the study is just so <coughs> conflicting. Yeah. Dan, I agree with, with all of your points. I think for the people who are not medical on here, any lymph node enlargement, it's not directly linked to cancer. There is a million one things that can cause an enlarged lymph node, like a tooth infection. Athletes, fought, any sort of infection can cause it. I'd also like to see if there was a control group within that publication because you've got nothing to compare it with. So you're just measuring people with lymphatic stasis. And as you said, there's multiple reasons for patients with lymphatic stasis. You can get lymphatic stasis with overuse of toxin in the lateral orbicularis oculi muscle. So again, there's so many confounding factors in here. What it's done, this study, is exactly what we're talking about. So it's made people talk, it's, it's put it out there. And none of these claims can be substantiated until we see the evidence which is presented to us. Again, until then, Dan, I, I just feel it's just going to be pure conjecture. You, you know, you, you can say it does, you can say it doesn't. So at this moment in time, there's a suggestion that lymphatic pooling with associated filler may or suggested risk. We don't know. We have not seen the biopsies and it'd be interesting to see why they biopsy the patient who's got a filler. Why don't they just dissolve it? And that normally resolves the problem. Exactly. The other thing too is that it's really interesting to make that same words like absorbing congesting and, and going down to the lymph node. I don't know. Like you can't see lymphatic drainage channels whenever you're doing an anatomy dissection. They're, they're there and that's why there's a dye. But it's interesting because as of now, I don't know if there's proof that it actually goes inside and goes down to the lymphatic system or if it's just being compressed, right? Because as I mentioned before, if you have poor lymphatics and naturally before ever having is that because of your diet? Is that because of just genetics? Is that just who knows? And does that mean that that person's at risk of having cancer in that area just because they have poor lymphatics? It's such a statement. So that's basically it. Honestly, Lee, it's great seeing you. I'll see you in Monaco. And I will also make a link to the Master Injector series for the one in Toronto here in the caption. So stay tuned for that. If you guys are interested, check it out. It was great having you. Thanks for this great discussion. And thanks everyone for joining. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. Listen, everybody, don't have nightmares. No, nah, you guys are good. I'm not worried about it at all. <laughs> all right. Cheers, everyone. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. See you. Bye.